Hi everybody, so in video 1932 we talked about flash graphene and we talked about it by highlighting the two flash techniques. You can either flash it with electricity like Tour Group had done or you can flash it with light like Kerner had done. Either's good, either produces graphene and either is perfectly acceptable in my mind Doing it with the laser is just much more approachable for people. Now, people were a bit disappointed that I didn't actually make a supercapacitor in that video, and there are two main reasons. One is, it's one of those, it does what it says on the tin. There's basically nothing to see. The other is, I already did a video on this about a year ago, but hey-ho, things do get lost in the milieu of life. So. In order to create a supercapacitor, flashing it with a laser, then you need a laser that is between 405 and 450 nanometers, which basically means every laser you're ever going to get, because that means either a diode or CO2. Either will work. It doesn't matter how powerful the laser is, as long as at a minimum you can put 3.6 watts optical power out there, which is pretty much every single laser you're going to buy. So it's really unrestrictive about what laser you're going to be able to use. Just about anything you can buy is going to pretty much do the job. And we used a cheap Banggood laser, which I think cost me about £145, and it was uh, a 5 watt laser, and we got a beautiful result. So anything is going to be able to do it. All you do is you draw a drawing in your drawing package. Now, the famous one is interdigitation, which is basically fingers that interlock with each other. You draw that up in your drawing package and you're going to lay something. Now, the first thing that was lazed was this stuff, capped on tape. Capped on tape is dead easy to use, produces a brilliant result, and that's why I talked about it. But of course, people now they've discovered you can laze graphene have been doing all kinds of things. The tour group have done coconuts and potatoes. Then you find a lot of people doing, oh well, paper and wood, all sorts of stuff. Paper is extremely interesting to me, but of course, if you get a bit of paper and you laser it, all that will happen is it'll burn. So you need to do something to the paper to prevent it burning. And what you do is soak it in a fire retardant. The easiest fire retardant to use is probably borax. So sodium tetraborate. You soak your paper in sodium tetraborate, dry it, then the next day it's ready to laze. You laze it by drawing an interdigitated pattern in your laser program, loading it up, sticking the thing underneath the laser and turning the laser on. Okay, that's what came out of the laser. Actually, I think that's really quite impressive. It's got a real graphitic look to it, but that actually has formed a graphene. It's a spongy graphene because we've got an explosion in there, but you can see it looks really graphitic. And now we need to test that as a supercapacitor, but that laser has done an awesome job. Okay, so I've got it on this capacitance meter, which is a Rigol DM3058. It's a pretty decent meter. All I've done is connect a couple of aluminium strips onto it so it can make good contact. And all by itself, without electrolyte, it's around about uh, a nanofarad, 1.078 nanofarads. Now, um, that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider what it is, actually, that's really quite impressive. Because um, something that was physically this size, but two plates of aluminium, will be around about 35 picofarads. So it's a lot more, maybe about 100 times more or something like that. All ballpark figures, but really very much more than it would be just as a plate capacitor. And of course, that's to do with the surface area of the graphene. Now, I haven't added any electrolyte, and I'm going to put a bit of tissue paper on it and a little bit of electrolyte, and we're going to measure the capacitance of that. So we bang a bit of electrolyte on it, and we get 6.5 microfarads. Now, again, that might not sound a lot, I mean, microfarads, but remember, it's supposed to be picofarads. Without electrolyte, it's in the sort of nanofarads. 
With the electrolyte, we're getting microfarads for that tiny piece of material. Now, obviously, there's a fair bit of playing around to it, but that is really quite a cool result. Okay. It really is that simple. All you need is a desktop laser and some of this stuff, and you're away. I mean, obviously, there's a lot can be done with it. You could try different patterns, you can stack them up, you can see how it works on a whole field, you can try different electrolytes. It's just such a ton of stuff you could do with it to create your own storage devices for, well, the trouble of doing it, really. And that's one of the things I like about it so much, is it opens the possibility for experimentation and building to anybody and everybody, which makes it brilliant as far as I'm concerned. But there's just nothing else to it, which is, um, you know, difficult to do a video on. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.